Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this service of evening prayer brought to you by Christ Church Borough Fair in Beaconsfield, but as usual on Wednesday, coming to you live from my home in Verdun. Uh, today, we'll be using the right two for uh, evening prayer, uh, according to the U.S. Episcopal Prayer Book. This is the uh, more contemporary language version, and the link is in the comments section, and the service starts on page 115. <clears throat> Let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Seek him who made the Pleiades and Orion, and turns deep darkness into the morning, and darkens the day into night, who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out upon the surface of the earth. The Lord is his name. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. We continue with the confession on page 116. Dear friends in Christ, here in the presence of Almighty God, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins so that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we have confessed that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Amen. We'll say the, the Fos Hilloran, O Gracious Light, on page 118. O Gracious Light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O Giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. <clears throat> Psalm appointed for today. Give me one moment, I didn't mark the psalm. Yeah, I forgot to do something. <clears throat> Psalm 12. Psalm 12, found, found on page 597 of the prayer book. We will say it together responsibly by half verse. <clears throat> Psalm 12. Help me, Lord, for there is no godly one left. The faithful have vanished from among us. Everyone speaks falsely with his neighbor. With a smooth tongue they speak from a double heart. Oh, that the Lord would cut off all smooth tongues. And close the lips that utter proud boasts. Those who say, with our tongue we will prevail. Our lips are our own, who is Lord over us. Because the needy are oppressed, and the poor cry out in misery. I will rise up, says the Lord, and give them the help they long for. The words of the Lord are pure words. Like silver refined from ore and purified seven times in the fire. O Lord, watch over us. And save us from the generation for forever. The wicked prowl on every side. And that which is worthless is highly prized by everyone. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> I 
Our first reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 15, verses 22, Exodus 15, 22 through 16, 10. Exodus chapter 15, verse 22 through chapter 16, 10. Then Moses ordered Israel to set out from the Red Sea, and they went into the wilderness of Shur. They went for three days in the wilderness and found no water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink the water of Marah because it was bitter. That is why it was called Marah. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? He cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. There the Lord made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he put them to the test. He said, If you will listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his sight, and give heed to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will not bring upon you any of the diseases that I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Then they came to Elim, where there were twelve springs of water, and seventy palm trees, and they camped there by the water. The whole congregation of the Israelites set out from Elim, and Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill, to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for them that day. In that day I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, in the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. Here ends the, the Old Testament lesson. <clears throat> We will now say together the Song of Mary, the Magnificat, on page 119. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. And this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty, away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> Our second reading is taken from the epistle of 1 Peter, chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. 1 Peter 2, 1 through 10. Rid yourselves, therefore, of all malice and all guile, insincerity, insincerity, envy, and all slander. 
like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you, then, who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Here ends the epistle lesson. I will say together the song of Simeon, the Nunc Dimittis, on page 120. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our Gospel lesson is from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 1 through 11. John 15, 1 through 11. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Here ends the Gospel lesson. Name the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Some interesting readings today, various, sun, various and sundry sorts. <clears throat> I have to... Uh, a comment on the the Exodus reading because I find it a bit uh, when I read it it's a bit it strikes me as a bit comical uh, because of the constant complaining uh, it, and it and it goes on I mean it's not just here but I mean it's kind of a theme mm -hmm. that the the children of Israel as soon as they escape from Egypt they and they escape the Egyptians. They, they commence to complain about everything, uh, about you know, why are they wandering in the desert, they have no good food, uh, they have, don't have enough water, where are you leading us, you know, we shouldn't have left Egypt, all these things, we, you know, you're, you don't know what you're doing, Moses. Uh, and I also am always, uh, I find the word, the word is an English word, but, you know, it's, it's in many translations, even in the NRSV, which is a, a modern translation, the flesh pots of Egypt. I just find that word so, so uh, 
such a, a, a an interesting word. I don't know. It's it's kind of funny and conjures up interesting images. I guess that's meat. I guess that means pots of meat, but whatever. Flesh flesh pots. Uh, well, my 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 researcher is telling me. Well, places providing luxurious or hedonistic living. Well, that's what it, that's what it's come to mean, I think, in our our use of it. But I think originally it it must have been an actual pot of meat, flesh pots, and bread. <clears throat> but what? But you know what? You see what happens. Um, they complain and they complain, and. God gives them food. God has heard your complaining and gives you food. So um, maybe it says that sometimes we need to complain. Uh, we need to be upset. Now maybe their, their complaining was a bit excessive and they were not that grateful for... Because uh, as soon as they escape from slavery, they, they kind of... That, that goes away... They don't focus on slavery, but focus on the hardship they're enduring now. Uh, and they don't really have patience with Moses to, uh, you know, to, to persevere to the good that, is, that will come, the promised land. But they're not, they're not punished for, for uh, complaining. They are, they get food because... The Lord has heard their complaining and has compassion on them. So I'm not saying so much that maybe we need to complain constantly to God, but we, or complain about our own circumstances, uh, especially if it's if it's trivial. But it is good to 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 uh, complain, so to speak about injustice in the world and about things not right in the world, not just say, oh, we shouldn't complain, we should just, you know, we as human beings should just be satisfied with what we have. But throughout history, there's been no justice, no, no advancement in the, the justice of humanity without someone getting a bee in their bonnet and, and complaining, protesting. So I mean, it's 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 a it's not a, a perfect metaphor here, but uh, you know, the the lesson doesn't seem to be just be quiet and and be happy with what you have, but they complain, they complain, and finally they're heard. So I just had to say something about the Exodus reading. Sometimes complaining is warranted. And then we, we have our, our gospel reading. One of these uh, I am state uh, uh, passages. And this is uh, John, one of John's trademarks. Uh, John has a few calling cards, so to speak. Uh, one is abide. If you uh, just kind of read through John, you notice the word abide comes up again and again and again. I abide in you, you abide in me, I abide in the Father, the Father abides in me. Abiding is more than just, it is very intimate because it's indwelling. It's not even being with, it's being in. So it's a very intimate expression. This kind of characterizes uh, John, John's gospel. Another thing that we've talked about recently that characterized John's gospel is the Jews. Uh, being, you know, as kind of characterized as a group separate from Jesus and his followers, which, as I've said before, is uh, problematic when we're reading it from a non-Jewish perspective. It, it sounds anti-Semitic. Um, but another calling card of John is um, the I am statements. And there are a series of I am statements You've probably heard them uh, 
may be difficult to recall them in order, but uh, you've heard them in various places. I am the bread of life. That's probably the most famous one. It's a nice hymn that we have uh, by this, this title. Um, I am the true vine. I am the living. I am living water. Uh, I am the. I am the gate. Uh, I am the good shepherd. And I'm blanking out on the other ones, but uh, you get the point. And um, of course, everything in John is symbolic, and John is not not documenting what happened uh, historically so much as the other Gospels where Jesus sounds more like a real person and in John he sounds like a philosopher uh, who's, who talks a lot and gives a lot of speeches. But these I am statements are very deeply symbolic because It's just not like the word I am is kind of a, um, to a, 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 a Jewish audience. Uh, and even though we, we say, you know, the Jews are talked about as a separate group, we're still talking about a Jewish context that even the, the John's uh, uh, readers were coming from a Jewish context. This is this I am is not just like oh, saying, you know, I am hungry or uh, I am uh, I am Canadian or something. It's not just a verb. It's hearkening back to the um, the the account in Exodus where Moses, remember Moses in the burning bush. When Moses encounters God Almighty, uh, the Lord, but it's not really the Lord, it's, uh, it's a word that can't be pronounced, God's name. When Moses asks, who am I speaking to? The answer is the, the holy name of God. That, that, you know, that it's not, we, we've lost the pronunciation because Jews never pronounced it because it was considered to be taking the Lord's name in vain. Uh, but it translates roughly as, uh, uh, well, it's translated in English as, I am who am. Uh, and that's more or less what it means in Hebrew, though mm -hmm. it's not an exact translation. It's, But I am is part of it. And when... And here's where we're kind of lost in, uh, we lose a lot in translation. Because in the Greek Bible, and in the Greek Old Testament, because the, uh, the Jews of Jesus' time mostly read the Bible in Greek. Even the, the Hebrew Bible, because very few people knew Hebrew anymore at this, at this point, and they read the Septuagint, which was the an earlier Greek translation of the whole Torah and the uh, prophets. So they're reading the Hebrew Bible in Greek. And when, it's, when, the, when the Hebrew Bible is quoted in the New Testament, it's quoted from the Greek version. And in the Greek uh, translation of Exodus, when Moses is speaking to the Lord in the burning bush, and... God says, I am. That phrase in Greek, ego e me, that's what it is in Greek, is the exact same one that's in John in these I am statements. And it's a kind of emphatic. It's not just like I'm. It's really I am. And it's kind of it, it kind of jumps out at you. So there's a point being made when John's Jesus can, repeats these statements, I am this, I am that. He's not just using an ordinary verb, but he is identifying with the Lord God Almighty. The, 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 the God of the universe. 
he is identifying with God in these statements. Which is why, why the Jews, and again, that's not, that's not the Jewish people, but the authority figures are always uh, getting angry with him because he sounds like he's speaking blasphemously. He's identifying himself with Almighty God. So when you look at the I am, I am, I am, it's more than just a, a verb. It is uh, referencing his identity with the God of the universe. So there's that. And, uh, of course, these different I am statements reference different parts of what Jesus means. Uh, means spiritually speaking. You know, I am the bread of life. That's Eucharist right there. That's uh, you know that's at the heart of our of our uh, Christian worship. The Eucharist. Also, I am the true vine is also an indirect uh, reference to the Eucharist because vine is uh, uh, wine basically. I am the living water. There's baptismal references there. Uh, I am the gate. That you know that through Christ we know God. I'm the good shepherd. Good Shepherd Sunday will be coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, that God through Christ cares for us and so forth. And this true vine. Um, <clears throat> We again have this abiding language. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. This intimate abiding relationship and language, uh, it, it's kind of it feels kind of abstract for us, but the life of the branches, if you think about any sort of plant, you know, vine or whatever, uh, when, when it gets cut off, when, it, when a, a, a part of a, bra a branch or whatever, a leaf is, is, is cut off from the, the trunk, the stem, it dies because it's cut off from the light, from its life. Now we kind of we see this this language here. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. There's a tendency, uh, because of the Christian tradition that focuses on things like hell and, and damnation, uh, to to see this as like well, you know, cast into hell sort of thing. Um, I don't think that's what it means. Um, Jesus' teaching is not uh, condemnatory, but it's stating a, a, um, a fact. It's, 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 it's continuing this metaphor of uh, this agricultural metaphor. And it's just stating a fact that if a branch is cut off from its plant, its parent plant, it's going to die because there's, it has no access to the roots. It has not, no access to the, the soil, to the water, the nutrients in the ground. Uh, so it will wither and die. So it's, he's saying that as part of the body of Christ, the Christian community, we must be uh, we must abide in Christ. We must be rooted there. Because that's where our life derives from. Our life derives from God. And that life in us is through Christ abiding in us and we abiding in, in Christ. It's just like a plant. If we're 
cut off from the roots, we won't get the nutrient and the life, the life force that that we need to be uh, to to have life in the big capital L sense. And this Easter season, uh, when we focus on the 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 resurrection, I say we we focus, but it's at the heart of our faith throughout the year. It's the base of the Christian faith is the, the victory of life over death and over, of light over darkness. What's important for us is that that life, that resurrection life, must live in us, not just on Easter Sunday, not just on Sunday, Sunday's a little Easter, every Sunday's a little Easter. But always, we must abide in Christ's resurrection life. Not looking back to something that happened 2,000 years ago, but looking to the reality of the, resur the resurrection life now, which, we, which must animate our existence here and now, and into eternity. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> now we will have a hymn, Common Praise 231. Yep. Uh, that Easter tide with joy was bright.
Now we'll say together the creed on page 120. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> we use suffrages form A on page 121. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing for joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery hast established the new covenant of reconciliation, Grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives that the, what they profess by their faith, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with, with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on the doing of your will and that we, being delivered from the fear of all enemies, may live in peace and quietness through the mercy of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us for evenings at hand and the days past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in Scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Amen. Now is our time for intercessory prayer. If you have prayer requests, requests for prayers of healing uh, or other support, type them in the comment section as we pray together. God of healing, God of peace, we lift up to all of suffering humanity, suffering from disease and torn apart by strife. We pray for peace in Ukraine. We pray for protection for all the Ukrainian people, for refugees, for those fighting on the front lines. the weak and vulnerable, for the defenseless. We pray for, for the light of truth and peace and love to penetrate through to the Russian people especially to the leadership of that country. We pray for deep and radical conversion to the way of peace. God of love and mercy. We 
We pray for all the needs in our parish, for those who are sick. For those who are in suffering in mind or body or spirit. We pray for those who are isolated, those who are lonely, those who are still hindered from from coming to church by COVID concerns. Pray for all those who are mourning and all those who have died. Today we especially, we especially pray for John. We commit him to your loving care and to your embrace of light. We pray for all those who have died this day. May light perpetual shine upon them, and may they rest in peace. Amen. We pray for all those in positions of authority, leaders in government, leaders in business, leaders in religion, that all may be inspired inspired and urged to work and act for the best interests of the human family, that those who have wealth may use it for good, and that the gross inequality of wealth versus poverty in the world may be reduced that those in need may have abundance. God of love and mercy. Thank you. We pray for those who are preparing for baptism, especially those in our parish who will be baptized on Pentecost. We pray for your Holy Spirit, to work in them, to prepare them for this, this important and beautiful transition. God of love and mercy, gracious God, we lift up to you all these prayers and concerns and petitions that we have spoken aloud or whispered silently in our hearts. All this we ask in Christ's holy name. Say together the general thanksgiving on page 125. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit 
be among you, remain with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us for evening prayer. We gather at the same time next week on Facebook Live for evening prayer once again and throughout the Easter season and beyond. Uh, our services continue at 10 o'clock in person in the church Sunday morning, also broadcast online uh, <coughs> throughout uh, there's something I was going to mention. Oh, yes. Uh, this Sunday, last Sunday, we had morning prayer, exceptionally. This Sunday, we will resume uh, the normal uh, normal services, uh, Holy Eucharist at 10. This Sunday will be traditional language service. Hope to see you all soon for, so soon in person for our Sunday services. I wish you a pleasant evening and a blessed rest of the week. And good night.